Hey everyone and welcome welcome back to the channel. This is your host Carmina and today Levi and I are gonna talk a little bit about the upcoming full moon in Leo and that's gonna happen on the 9th of February if you live in Europe or if you live in the US it's gonna happen still on the 9th of February but at night and that's gonna matter when we talk about the cards with you. So hi Levi, welcome to the channel. Welcome back. Thank you Carmina. What does actually happen when we have a full moon? A full moon happens or occurs when the sun and the moon are 180 degrees apart in ecliptic longitudes. When the earth is between the sun and the moon, from our perspective on earth, the moon is fully illuminated. Now in astrology, which is deriving meaning from astronomical phenomena, we say, you know, the moon is in Leo. So it means that these signs and these planets, they're not archetypes in themselves, but they point to archetypes, which are these, you know, universal patterns of behavior also. Moon reflects the light of the sun as moonlight unto the night of the unconscious world or whatever that archetype or that symbol it may represent. And here we're talking about Leo. There was a cat around here, so that would have been fitting. <laughs> I think it's important because you're talking about symbols, you're talking about deriving meaning from something that is universal that has been going around for such a long time it's deriving meaning from astronomical phenomena so a full moon happens between the sun and the moon the two brightest planets out there or in astrology they're referred to as grahas in vedic astrology which means caesars the sun of course representing the fully masculine force and then the moon representing our self-image like the fully, the fully feminine counterpart and so they are the luminaries. They are the two brightest objects in our skies. They are sattvic plants also. They symbolize our true nature. And so that's why it's important to reflect on an astronomical phenomenon like a full moon or a new moon and what it represents symbolically. The new moon is the time to plant the seeds. The full moon is like uh, seeing what grew from those seeds. So it's also to gather things up, to have some conclusions, it's like the fruition of things. How do you think the full moon affects people as a collective? I think to examine that, it's always important to contemplate and to find out what these signs really represent, like what Leo represents. For example, we know that it's a fire sign. It's a sign that is ruled by the sun, right? So we have the queen, the moon, traveling through the house or the sign of the king. That's going to be important. So whatever that represents on a worldly scale, Leo is the king and has to do with royalty and so on. Um, there has been some stuff coming out uh, about royalty, like Meghan Markle. Um, yeah. So you can look at it from that perspective. It's an enormous expression of archetypes also. So we give expression to that and then tie that in with what is actually happening for the person. Use astrology as a means of reflection and also what you bring to it, like a full moon or a new moon, you can, it can just pass you by, but also you can bring some focus to it to look at what these the symbols represent for you on that moment and then to drive meaning from that. Now let's talk about the, the signs of this full moon. So we have the moon itself, it's in the sign of Leo and the sun is, is still in the sign of Aquarius. All the oppositions are very typical for the zodiac because we have pairs of opposite signs. We have axes of 180 degrees. So we know that when we have these oppositions, they have a similarity at the same time because both of these are fixed signs. One is an air sign, the other is a fire sign. So they're uh, masculine and fixed Aquarius and Leo. With Leo, we, we see this emphasis on putting boundaries on commanding respect on being the king in your castle so it's more maybe a ceremonial but not just ceremonial it's putting boundaries but also showing off and with aquarius the focus is less on the individual and more on the collective groups of people on what you can bring to groups of people of how you can as an individual be bringing something worthwhile to the world leo is ruled by the sun and then aquarius is ruled by saturn and we know that saturn in mythology is the bastard child of the sun so they're in a strange way related genetically um, but they're diametrically opposing forces saturn represents our complexes and also the masses and the sun represents or Leo represents the king. The element connected to Leo is fire, which is always connected with Dharma. And Dharma means nature, like 
being self-oriented, the higher self coming to expression in Leo, right? You are who you are because of uh, who you are. That's what Leo really represents. It's the king that sits on a throne and manages the kingdom. Of course, Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. It's also the sign of the humanitarian. So, or Saturn is always connected to psychological complexes and overcoming psychological complexes. That's why the Saturn signs are always connected to water, right? The Capricorn as the Makara or as the crocodile, and then Aquarius is, of course, water tanks and so on is associated with that. So we have an, an opposition between Saturn rule sign and the king, the sun, which means we have air opposing fire. And air is, has a social connotation, and fire is about self and self-development. So moon there, shining a light, or reflecting the light of the sun, could tell us that it's a time to focus on self and um, of course, one of the fire signs, and as I mentioned, fire is connected to Dharma, and Dharma means nature. Like, for example, water has a quality of wetness. If you take wetness from water, then it's not water anymore. If you take heat from fire, then it's not that anymore. So Dharma means that a quality of something that if you take that quality, if you would take that quality away, then it's not that thing anymore. So it's like a, the essence, the true essence of something. Yeah, the means, sun is connected to essences in general. Exactly. Yeah. So it's very much about self-focus in that sense. So what is your path? How are you managing your affairs, Leo? It's, Leo is the sign of the manager, right? I would say it's at mm -hmm. the same time, it brings it more on a subjective emotional level because Moon is kind of in charge of that part of us, the subjective consciousness. Mm -hmm. So instead of just being more dry, you know, the sun is a dry planet. So if it would be the sun in Leo, it would be more logical, more cut and dry. But when the moon is in Leo, it kind of brings that to our consciousness, to our focus, maybe awareness, because we are emotional creatures more than rash. When you were mentioning before about the sun and Saturn, yes, they are diametrically opposed. But at the same time, there are two planets that are... Uh, are so dry so they have this dryness there are also planets that are very simple they don't like to embellish things and they both have the quality of, of steadfastness in a way because saturn is also perseverant look at all these birds yeah it's an omen Ooh, look at them. yeah i think you know if you look at the um condition of the planets which in vedic astrology refer to as avastas then we see that Saturn, the sun is in the sign of Saturn. In so, so many other planets, like we see, um, you know, Jupiter, Saturn itself is in the sign of Saturn, the south node, Pluto. Yeah. There's a lot of Saturnian energy going on at the moment. The sun is going to be a little star out there in the signs of uh, Saturn. So now we look at moon on the opposite side there, 180 degrees away in the zodiac. We see moon in the sign of Leo. And Leo is, of course, ruled by the sun and the sun is a friend, right? And this is natural friendships, is a friend towards the moon. So moon is being supported and being supported very well. And moon is always like a self point. Moon is quite strong there because it is being aspected during a full moon. So it's an important point. It's aspected by its Lord. So it's a manifesting aspect as well. And the full moon, it's, all, it's always a manifesting time in general, like we said in the beginning. What do you think? There are not many aspects besides this opposition sun moon that happens every full moon. I don't see like a lot of things going on. Mercury is in the second from the sun and it's in the eight from the moon. So it's not really um, aspecting. Mm -hmm. and so here we have Mercury in the sign of Pisces, sextiling the notes. So it's a harmonious aspect in terms of whatever the notes represent. And we, have, we would have to go into what, what that means. But the North Node, for example, and Cancer trining Mercury in a Pisces. So it's trined from two what? water signs, Moksha signs. Moksha means it has a more contemplative connotation. Mercury is debilitated in Pisces because it's a water sign. Mercury is about discerning things and so on. So it needs a little more time. It, and Pisces is about connectivity. It represents, I mean, symbolized by the, the you know, it symbolizes the ocean. Yeah, everything connects there. And Mercury wants to cut things uh, apart and wants to discern, dissect, you know, have investigate. this investigate objective information, all mm -hmm. these kind of things. So, Check out our book because we give a lot of information on the planets and the signs, even including the ones we gave today about the sign Leo. I think Mercury is also going to join Neptune soon. Mm -hmm. So it would be more like a um, Piscean affair. Yeah. <laughs> If we look at the cards of truth, 
this full moon is going to take place either on a four of spades or a three of spades. If you're in the United States, it's going to be at 2 a.m., so it's still a four of spades day. But if you're in Europe and Asia and Australia, it's going to be a three of spades, which is kind of like a different type of energy. The four of spades is more recollected, more peaceful. The three of spades just wants to expand and dare and take some risks. But it's still a spade energy, so it's focused on the self, which combines with this full moon in Leo. It's also about the self, the individuality, the fruition of something that has to do with the self. May it be the expansion of the self in the parts of the world that have the three of spades after sunrise or the four of spades, which is like finding some peace, finding some balance with yourself. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. I hope you have a fruitful new moon, reflections on the self, and we'll see you guys soon. Check out Levi's website, levicozen.com. If you don't know how to spell that, you can find it in my description box. Check out his YouTube channel, and you can buy our astrology book. See you later. Bye. Bye. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so, should I put it? Yeah, I will do it. The upcoming full moon in Aquarius? Leo. <laughs>